Well, it's personal between me and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing games are missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. All right, so one guy that fought on the Virgil Ortiz undercard that I'm very intrigued by is that man right there, Raul Cordiel, you know, Mexican Olympian, 14 and 0, 12 knockouts. He wound up scoring a stoppage victory on this card against. Um, Elias Diaz and Elias Diaz, you know, credit to him. He was it was a step up in class for Diaz. I thought he did a, a good job to survive and be durable and gave a decent account of himself. But ultimately, he was outgunned, outmanned, and outskilled by the precision punching technique of a of, of Raúl Cordiel. Right. So let's talk about him. We know that the welterweight division right now is in, is in a state of transition because Terence Crawford has three of the belts still. We know Jerron Ennis got elevated to IBF champion. Uh, it's fully expected that Terrence Crawford versus Earl Spence, the rematch, will take place at a higher weight due to the fact that Spence can't make the 147 limit anymore. So if that does happen, I think inevitably, I mean, even if it does happen at 47, regardless, I think in the next year or so, the, the, the other three belts, the WBC, the WBA, and the WBO, all those belts are going to fragment. And this division is going to be very wide open because you're not going to have... You're not going to have Earl Spence. You're not going to have Terrence Crawford. Boots only has one belt. So, you know, when you look at who could who could actually make some noise in the division, uh, you got to look at, you know, guys like Jin Suzaki, guys like Giovanni Santillan, uh, you know, fighters like a Trey Sean Wiggins in the WBA rankings. Um, and then I'll, 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 I would throw Raul Cordiel's name in the mix, even and, and standing honest as well. I would throw Raul Cordiel's name in the mix because first and foremost, you know, um, he's got good amateur experience. This, this guy was a, a Mexican Olympian. Um, and not just that, I think I think when you look at his style, uh, he's a precision power punching technician. I mean, kind of in a, in a similar sense, I think he's kind of like the poor man's Virgil Ortiz. Same stance, uh, a lot of the same strengths. I just don't think his balance is as good as Virgil. I don't think he has the same exact power jab as Virgil. But Raul Cordillo has a way when he puts punches together and he starts picking them and he starts, and he starts putting them together. You know, he has a, a way of um, breaking these fighters down. And I think I actually think his best punch and his most dangerous punch is actually his his uh, his right uppercut. He's got a beautiful right uppercut when he when he throws it and it lands. It's 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 very dangerous to shut the punch. And I think with time and experience and, and even more rounds in the professional ranks. That punch will get even more dangerous for him. So when you look at Correo and where he stands right now in the landscape of the welterweight division, he's only ranked in one of the sanctioning bodies. He's ranked um, in the WBC ranking. He's ranked number 10. So as far as what could be next for him, I mean, look, he's a golden boy fighter. Um, you know, we look at some of the guys ranked in and around him in the WBC. You got like at number fifteen, you got Shakram Giyashov, the Uzbek. You got Roman Villa. You got Adrian Broner, who somehow snuck his way into the into the WBC ranking. So that's that's interesting. Um, but then like literally right below him is Jin Sazaki in the WBC rankings, and then you got Abel Ramos at nine, Jamal James at eight, and then you got like the only in house fighter kind of close to him is is Giovanni Santillan. Um, I don't know if Goldwyn wants to make that fight, but that that'd be nice to see Curiel versus Santillan. I know. The gap in experience uh, in the pros is is pretty wide because Santiago has like thirty something fights, but Curiel was uh, an Olympian, so the amateur experience he has could make up for the fact that you know if, if that fight was to get made, that 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 might make things a little even just because of the, the amateur background he's got. So that could be a good fight. I, I like that fight because I feel like Santiago showed a lot in his last fight against Rocha, and Curiel is just a just a really good steady fighter, and I would expect. Golden Boy Promotions in conjunction with his esteemed manager, Frank Espinosa, who, who's been around for years. You know, he's Oscar Valdez's manager. I would expect him to move Cordiel very, very strategically, right? So uh, maybe Santiago's not realistic. But then, you know, one guy that I've seen in the World Play rankings for a, for a while, and he often gets overlooked. But I, I think a good fight for Cordiel, if, if they really wanted to shoot him up the rankings, and I think, I think it's a very winnable fight, is maybe him versus the number two ranked WBC contender, uh, Suleiman Suzoko. I think Correo right now could beat Suleiman Suzoko. Suzoko's a good fighter, but um, beatable. Very beatable. Um, he's going to be there in the pocket. I think his style, the way he throws punches, his stance, his posture, it's 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 damn near tailor-made for Raul Correo. So I, I would like that fight if, if they can make it happen. So um, he's definitely one of the guys. I would say he's one of the four or five guys that when I look at this division in transition, I look at you know all the rankings, I look at who could be, apart from Boots. I mean, Gerard Ennis and Stanley Annas, 
Those are obvious answers. But I'm saying apart from those guys who are at the top, I look at guys like Gordiel, Jen Sazaki, um, you know, Trayshawn Wiggins as a dark horse as well. Um, you know, Giovanni Santiano. I, I look at these guys as guys that can really make some noise in the division. And I think 147 might get to a place really soon where it kind of becomes like 154 where belts just start getting passed around. Because a lot of these guys are very similar in caliber and in class. But, um, you know, I I, I like Curio. Curio, Raul Curio, he got, he got my radar in 2021 because I, I the first time i ever found out or knew who he was was in 2021 when he fought kendall tremendo castaneda out there in san antonio and he knocked him out in seven rounds and, and kendall kendall's a good fighter kendall's been around the block kendall uh had a good run of form at, right after that loss to curio Ke, uh, kendall castaneda fought in the pro box last chance tournament where he got all the way to the final and lost to antonio moran but he beat guys like sonny frederickson in some really entertaining fights so he's a good fighter. He stopped him, stopped Brad Solomon, stopped Courtney Pennington, and stopped Elias Diaz. So he's been stopping everyone they put in front of him. The last, what, how many fights in a row has it been? It's been five, six. Let me see. Hold on. How, how, how many fights has it been for him? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He's on a nine-fight knockout streak. So he's doing what he needs to do. I think he's moving very, very well. He's not one of these guys that's going to talk a lot in the media so he may get overshadowed he may not even get mentioned the way he should but uh, i i like him as one of the four or five guys in this next transitional phase of the welterweight division to you know be a factor to be to, to be a tie level contender challenge for titles things like that and and he's got a fun precision punching come forward style which which i, I think is great defensively i think he, he, he could tighten up a little bit but i don't think his defense is horrible or i don't think it's like overly leaky he's he's good he's a good fighter and um Let's see how Golden Boy moves him in the future. But uh, that, that, that's my thoughts on Raul Cordiel. Let me know what you guys think. What do you guys think about Raul Cordiel and, and, and what could be next for him in the, in the Wealthweight division? Who do you want to see him fight later in 2024? And, and yeah, uh, leave your comments down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take your guys. Thank you for watching another video on the untouchable True School Sports Empire. For more great boxing content just like this video, click right here and make sure you subscribe. Much love from sunny South Florida.